Quel serait l'impact de l'indépendance sur les entreprises Brad McKay, professeur à l'Université d'Edimbourg, est allé interviewer une soixantaine d'entreprises implantées en Écosse pour savoir ce qui les préoccupait. C'est avant tout la question de la monnaie qui préoccupe les entreprises. Ensuite, les nouvelles lois. Et puis les taxes. Et enfin, la question de l'appartenance à l'Union européenne. So the number one uncertainty for most business leaders is the currency. So if Scotland were to be independent, would it would they be in some sort of a currency union with the rest of the United Kingdom? And if they weren't, then what currency would they would they be using? Uh, um, beyond that, uh, who and how different industries would be regulated tends to be a very big issue. Taxes, um, corporate taxes, but as importantly, if not more importantly, personal taxes. What would the personal tax rates be like? How might that influence the ability to be able to recruit and retain, um, you know, top, highly skilled talent? And then, of course, the EU as well. Would Scotland be have continuing membership in the EU right from Independence Day? Would there be some sort of a transition? Would they be outside the EU and having to reapply? And then, aside from that, too, then, of course, the, the possibility of the United Kingdom having a in-out referendum on its EU membership in 2017-2018. That's also a concern, but the more imminent, the more pressing issue for most business leaders is the Scottish uh, referendum in, in September. Mais est-ce que l'indépendance pourrait bénéficier aux entreprises C'est vrai qu'on parle toujours des risques, mais l'indépendance pourrait aussi créer de nouvelles opportunités. Yeah, so, I mean, there's, you're asking about the reasons why they're not citing more opportunities, and, and there's possibly two reasons behind that. I mean, the first one is that they, they may just not be looking for them yet. Um, you know, the, the, it's the risks that tend to be talked about much more frequently in the media. Those are the things that are immediately pressing for, for, uh, for different business leaders. But then the other thing, too, is that one has to remember that no matter which way you look at the independence debate currently, The UK has a single market, a very fluid market of 63 million people. Scotland has a population of 5.3 million people. So it's also possible that because Scotland would be a much, much smaller country, then the opportunities would be structurally much, much stronger, or much, much smaller. So whilst they might be there, they might be far more marginal compared to what is actually being given up, or at least the perception of what's being given up. Um, being, as being part of a, a much larger union. Ces risques pourraient-ils pousser les entreprises à délocaliser Cette question s'est invitée dans la campagne. Par exemple, la compagnie d'assurance Standard Life, basée à Édimbourg, a annoncé en février 2014 que, faute de clarification sur la monnaie et la juridiction des entreprises en cas d'indépendance, elles pourraient déménager en Angleterre. Michel Thompson, membre du groupe pro-indépendance Business for Scotland, a travaillé pendant 18 ans pour Standard Life. Elle pense qu'il est peu probable que Standard Life délocalise son activité à Londres. Pour elle, les médias ont exagéré cette menace. In reality, what they're saying is they would like to see some clarity over a currency union, because it's quite important to them that they can plan for a shared regulatory framework. And that's exactly what the Scottish Government is proposing, that there should be a currency union. So what you might have read in the main newspapers was sort of headlines, oh, Standard Life will leave factually, and this is a matter of public record, Standard Life did not say they would leave. All their intellectual capital, their all-important actuaries, very gifted mathematicians, they're all based in Edinburgh. The cost of them moving, particularly to London, incidentally, where the cost of real estate is so much higher, it, to me, it's extraordinarily unlikely because are 6,000 people going to be willing to move to London? No, and they'd lose their intellectual capital. I just think it was seized on by the mainstream media. In reality, like any good company, they will look at uh, ensuring that their interests can best be represented. And why wouldn't Scotland continue to do that? Mais c'est vrai que si le gouvernement écossais parvient à concrétiser ses promesses, les entreprises seront moins tentées de délocaliser in a scenario where the Scottish government was able to deliver all the things that they are, are, um, are you know, have, have proposed, for example, a currency union, sharing in financial services, uh, some regulatory authority, um, you know, things like being able to, Scottish universities, researchers being able to, to still access funding councils in the rest of the UK, you know, all these different things. 
the image of, of that they're putting forward is one of a partnership, a close working partnership. Um, if that were to materialize, then, then maybe that would mitigate against some of the, the possibility that, that many of these businesses might, might feel that they need to actually migrate some of their activity south. Enfin, donc on en revient toujours au même principe, les entreprises vont faire ce qu'il y a de mieux pour elles. Maintenant, savoir si l'indépendance va effectivement leur être bénéfique, en tout cas, les partisans du Yes en sont convaincus. Et pour Business for Scotland, ces menaces de délocalisation sont absolument vides de sens. Euh, lors du dernier référendum sur la dévolution, les entreprises avaient aussi menacé de délocaliser leur activité, et ça n'a pas été le cas. So how many of these businesses, I think, will still be here uh, All of them. I remember the head of the CBI saying at an event I was at that uh, so many companies would leave, it would, it would mean our economy wasn't viable. Well, the exact opposite has happened. Devolution has been good for business and they're still here. But then, au final, l'indépendance profiterait-elle à l'économie écossaise? Impossible de le prédire. The argument basically boils down to something extraordinary will happen because of independence. There's no evidence for it. But you know, the, the economist John Maynard Keynes, who you may have heard of, once talked about releasing the animal spirits of entrepreneurship. Where these animal spirits come from, who knows? It's something that's kind of up in the ether. But who knows? You know, because it's not been done before, would independence possibly galvanize Scotland in a way that wouldn't happen if it was just part of a larger union? That is a distinct possibility. Mais ouais, comme le dit Brad McKay, les opportunités qu'apporterait l'indépendance sont au final très floues, alors que les risques sont eux très identifiables. Donc euh, face à ce qui ressemble à un pari risqué, les entreprises vont fatalement privilégier la stabilité. Mais pour le camp du Yes, le marché est de toute façon habitué à jongler avec ces incertitudes. Now to me, it's quite clear in business terms of risks, no matter what you do. Is the risk of giving, absolving your sovereign right as a nation to somewhere else higher than taking control for yourself. In other words, electing a government that you vote for and electing that self-same government to make policy decisions and economic decisions that best favour Scotland. To me, it appears quite clear that that's fundamentally less of a risk than giving powers away for somebody else to make a decision because you know what it's no bad thing but Westminster makes decisions most designed to favour the city of London uh, and that's to the the detriment of Scotland so to my mind Scotland being in charge and taking accountability is much less of a risk in my view. So this this counter argument that well business leaders are used to dealing with risk or uncertainty businesses will never vote for uncertainty. They will always gravitate to where, towards what gives them the most stability. If that can be given in Scotland, then they will remain in Scotland. If that stability can be given in you know, the rest of the UK, in France, elsewhere, then that is where they will gravitate towards. That's just the way it works.